Welcome to this special day of celebration in the lives of these young men and women. During these past 22 weeks, these young recruits endured many things in their training to become one of Indiana's finest, an Indiana State Police Trooper. Today, we gather with them to celebrate their accomplishments and to wish them well in their new career. Shall we be in an attitude of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you today with great excitement and joy concerning the graduation of the 62nd Recruit School class. These recruits have worked hard and have been pushed to the limits in an effort to prepare them for the work that lies ahead. And now, O oh God, they have arrived at the moment they have dreamed about and longed for, that of becoming an Indiana State Police Trooper. We pray, O oh God, that these young officers, as they prepare to go their respective assignments, that, they, that you would watch over them and protect them as they respond to call to serve the people of Indiana. As they do serve the people of this great state, may you grant them wisdom, understanding, patience, and compassion in all that will be before them. May you help them in the performance of their duties as an Indiana State Police Trooper to do so with all integrity and professionalism. Father, we would also ask that you would be with the families of these new troopers, for this is a time of great transition, uncertainty, and anxiety, because they do not know what the future holds or where it will lead them. Grant to these families your patience, your peace, and a great amount of understanding as they go through this period of change in their lives. Oh God, may you add your special blessings upon this ceremony today to Superintendent Melvin Carraway and his staff, to Chief Justice Randall Shepard of the Indiana Supreme Court as he administers the oath of office to these new troopers. Father, may you truly bless Governor Franco Bannon as he leads the state and brings our keynote address later on. May you also, Lord, be with Eric Parker, a member of this class that was called to active duty in the war against terrorism. Lord, may you be with the other men and women of our military who have been deployed also in this fight against terrorism. May you protect them and keep them safe during their tour of duty so that they may return home safely to their loved ones. May we also pause to remember those who lost their lives on September 11th and their families. May your Holy Spirit comfort them in their loss. We also remember this day, December 7th, as a day of infamy, as the day of Pearl Harbor was bombed, and so many lost their lives in the service of this country. There is much to be great, thankful for and to remember this day, but we do ask, O oh Lord, that your presence be made known to us this day as we've gathered here in celebration of the accomplishments of these young officers. For we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Honorable Governor Frank O'Bannon, Honorable Chief Justice Randall Shepard, Superintendent Melvin Carraway, State Police Board President George Gardner, Secretary James Heidi, other State Police Board members, members of the executive staff, Indiana Law Enforcement Academy D Deputy Director Jim White, distinguished guests, fellow officers, families, and friends, it's my privilege to present to you the 62nd Recruit Academy class of the Indiana State Police. Over the, over the past 22 weeks, the members of this class have excelled both academically and physically. They've worked diligently to uphold the standards of excellence expected of them by receiving hundreds of hours of instruction designed to prepare them for the next phase of training as probationary officers in the field. Their training has been exemplified with an overall grade point average of 89% in the class. We should all be very proud of each and every one of their accomplishments as new troopers for the Indiana State Police. It is now my distinct honor to introduce Superintendent Melvin Carraway. Melvin J. Carraway was born August 17, 1953. He has a bachelor's degree from Heidelberg College in Tiffin, Ohio. He served in the Army and served as an interrogator from 1976 through 1979. From 1979 to 1983, he was a trooper in the Indianapolis District with the Indiana State Police. In June of 1983, he was promoted to a sergeant in the training division. In September of 1985, he was appointed to the rank of first sergeant and transferred to the enforcement division. He was elevated to the rank of lieutenant in the aviation section in September of 1986, and in March of 1989, he was promoted to a captain in the enforcement division. 
December of 1989, he was promoted to major as commander of the Enforcement Division. Then in September of 1994, he was appointed executive director of the State Emergency Management Agency. On January 13, 1997, Melvin J. Carraway was appointed superintendent of the Indiana State Police. Ladies and gentlemen, Superintendent Carraway. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here to, uh, to honor these graduates of the 62nd class. This is a, a wonderful time. Before I begin, um, however, I'd like to introduce uh, those up on the, uh, the podium with us uh, today. Beginning with, uh, obviously, you've heard about uh, Governor and Chief Justice Shepard, but uh, members of the executive staff, they include uh, Colonel Brackman, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Larry Delaney, Lieutenant Colonel Cody Johnson, Lieutenant Colonel Dean Petrie, and Special Counsel Les Miller, and um, Mark Dodd, the chaplain who, have you, who you've met uh, already. And other members up on the dais uh, are Mr. Gardner, the President of the State Police Board, Secretary Mr. Heidi, and uh, the Assistant Director of the Law Enforcement Academy, uh, Jim White. Also uh, with us today are other members of the, uh, the State Police Board, uh, beginning with Mr. Bennett, Ms. Gwendolyn Morgan, and Mr. McConnell. Uh, we're very happy to, uh, to have both the spouses of Mr. Gardner and Mr. Heidi, their son uh, Jim, and uh, also a daughter whose name is skipping me, Julie, Julie? Cheryl is skipping me right now. We're very happy that that uh, all of you are able to join us uh, today. These individuals are very important to uh, the organization of the Indiana State Police and the operation uh, day to day, and we're very grateful for, for their, their participation. I'm not going to, uh, to hold you with a lot to, to say today. Um, those of you that know uh, Mel Carroll, I'm sort of, uh, I like movies. Um, any chance I get to, to relax, I'm usually uh, watching a movie, and um, I find a great deal of, uh, now, <laughs> you say, what kind of movies does Melvin like? Well, I'm a, sort of a romantic, but uh, I like some of the action movies, too, uh, as you can imagine. And um, I find a great deal of uh, satisfaction <laughs> in watching uh, some of the movies. And one of the things that I, that I draw out of them, you know, movies, there's always some sort of cliche that you get out of the movies, right? I'll be back. Everybody knows, right? Terminator movie, right? All right. Uh, a, um, uh, I'm going to uh, make you an offer you can't refuse, all right? Godfather, Godfather movies, right? So every movie, there's usually a, a, a cliche that's behind them. Now, I was watching a movie uh, the other day, and, and, and hopefully it's maybe a, appropriate for us today. The, the saying in the movie constantly, constantly was by these young, young fellows was carpe diem. Everybody knows what that means, right? Seize, seize the day, right? Well... If there's anything that you get out of those 22 weeks, ladies and gentlemen of the 62nd class, is that you had to seize each and every moment of those recruit class days. Whether it was physical exercise, classroom training, Spanish, whatever it was, you had to give your all for that moment firearms, whatever it was, to be the best that you could be on that day. My challenge for you now is that after we leave this place, this graduation, is that you use that same motivation to seize the day. There's a, um, a Bible verse that says, um, this is the day the Lord has, hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I mean, the idea is that many of these days aren't uh, really promised to us. So you should make the very best of each and every one of them that you have. As I explained to you earlier today, this is going to be a, a time that you'll never, ever forget. But there can be many more of these days if you just use that same motivation, that same idea and lust that it took for you to finish those 22 weeks and seize the day. 
Carpe Diem. Remember that. I hope that you do. It's a very special time. You have the opportunity to change the world within your grasp. It doesn't have to be a, a whole community, just one individual at a time. It's all up to you to do. This is probably one of the, the smallest classes that we've ever had. But I hope that there has been a bond of friendship and camaraderie that, uh, that surpasses that. And you, you share that with one another and continue to share that with, uh, with each other. I'm very proud of each and every one of you. And I hope that you're proud of this day and the future that's ahead of you. Let me introduce to you now Governor Frank O'Bannon. He has spoken at each and every recruit class that we've had in his administration. That goes to show his dedication to the Indiana State Police and to public safety. He has always been there to champion the causes for which we've had, whether that's the concern for officers that have lost their lives, concern of issues that are happening in a community where law enforcement is impacted each and every day, from communications to equipment to procedures. It is because of his diligence and caring of the Indiana State Police I'm very happy to introduce to you Governor Frank O'Bannon as our speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mel. And thank all of you for being here. And certainly, I give you a strong welcome uh, to the State House, the state's gathering place, the place that kind of symbolizes Indiana's community. And certainly, to have the ceremonies here in the Capitol building is very, very important. It's a pleasure for me to be here today to congratulate, congratulate the 62nd rec uh, uh, State Police recruit, uh, recruit class. You have worked hard over the past five months, and we welcome you as a member of the Indiana State Police Force. Just six months ago, I gathered with Superintendent Mel Carraway and others as we dedicated the Indiana Law Enforcement and Firefighters Memorial on our state capitol grounds. And it's just to the west of us between this building and the state office building if you'd want to visit there as you leave. There, we remembered by name the nearly 600 Hoosier safety officers who have fallen in the line of duty. Three months later, at the same memorial site, which was overflowing with American flags honoring public safety officers who had given their lives to protect the people in Washington, D.C. and in New York City. Just as the hundreds named there have done for the citizens of Indiana. As our nation deals with unsettling events in the aftermath of September the 11th, we turn to heroes for inspiration. Heroes like those we saw in New York and Washington, and even those who fought the hijackers to their death in Pennsylvania. And ones like all of you who will go out and put your lives on the line every day for the citizens of our state. In these troubling times, it is great to know that all 23 of you are dedicated to serving your fellow Hoosiers, not for fame, not for glory, but for our citizens' safety. You all have a very important role to play as our nation and our state deals with the war against terrorism. And as our community struggle with the idea that there is truly great evil in the world, our security has been broken. But we should never underestimate the power and influence that police can have for our security, that police can have in our schools, in our communities, and in our neighborhoods. Since September 11th, all of us have personally seen the difference that you can make. Your actions as Indiana State Troopers, no matter how big or how small, 
will affect hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers throughout your career. It is both an honor and a responsibility. And I know you will take your responsibilities seriously. Police officers are an integral part of the community building, something that is more important now than ever before. When people join together, share experiences, and trust one another, things improve. Officers who become part of the area they serve, like you will be assigned to, help to deter crime, and they'll help to shape future leaders as you are a model. The state police have always stood ready to help when our communities need help. And I'm certain that you are ready to do your part. The Indiana State Police have accomplished many things over the past several years. They have reduced the number of injuries and deaths on Hoosier highways by making sure our citizens are buck buckling up through Operation Click It or Ticket. They have saved countless lives by getting drunk drivers off the road. And of course, they have solved crimes and helped bring people to justice. In these past four years, we in state government have taken steps to make your job easier and better. Together, we have passed laws that increase penalties for methamphetamine labs and the dealers that put them up and give you the authority to swiftly and properly dismantle these dangerous labs. We work together to pass legislation that will better protect domestic violence victims and allow you to enforce protective orders issued by other states and tribes. Last year, we improved the vision and dental insurance and cut in half the premiums retired state police employees have to pay for insurance. I know retirement seems a long time off for you right now, but it's the least we can do for troopers who have dedicated their lives to public service. And because we have a great working relationship between our state and local officials and our police force, we have accomplished many things. And we look forward to working with you as you join the Indiana State Police family. Reaching this point today is a confirmation of your professionalism and your skills and your integrity. And of course, and of course we know that what the state police is all about is about integrity, service, and professionalism. I congratulate all of you and your families and your friends on your accomplishments. And I believe, challenge you to live up to the state police motto again, integrity, service, professionalism. Being a, being a state police officer is not just a job, it's a calling. You have committed yourself to serving and protecting your fellow citizens. There could be no higher calling than that. So on behalf of the people of the state of Indiana, I salute you and we thank you. A good friend always uh, available to us to, on many occasions, particularly administering the oath of office, has been Chief Justice Randall Shepard. I call upon him now to administer the oath. Thank you, Superintendent. I, um, I wish to join Governor O'Bannon in um, his sentiments about the last uh, 90 days in our country's life 
even in a, a time of great anxiety. There has been um, a few. There have been a few rays of uh, sunshine and optimism. A few really good things that have happened, and one of those is the renewal that the American people, the renewal of the appreciation that the American people have for men and women who have dedicated their careers to public safety. Firefighters, police officers, other people engaged in public safety. This has been a time in which the country has rightly said thank you. They say thank you for two reasons. One, of course, is the obvious, that the nation's forces of public safety, the men and women in them, and of course now our military, help protect the values that we think make America special, protect Americans themselves and their families and their homes, seemingly more threatened than we had imagined. But the other reason is, particularly for people in law enforcement, that what they do day by day is a part of making America a just place in which to live. They help find the truth, hold accountable those who need to be held accountable, give a second chance to those who deserve a second chance. And in the end, make America a society worth defending. The people of the Indiana judiciary consider that their line of work as well. And we look forward to the time we will spend with this recruit class, as we do with those who've gone before you, in making this a decent and safe society. I invite all of the class now to stand and raise your right hand and take the oath of office. The first one that I get to present is to the cadet. It's called for the Superintendent's Award. This is presented to the cadet of each state police academy who has exhibited outstanding mental attitude, excellence in academics, physical performance, and who has exemplified the character expected of an Indiana State Police officer. I'm very proud and happy to present this award to, to Jason Ward. Next, I'm happy to present the award for Firearms Excellence. Let's see. 
This individual uh, award is presented to the individual who's had an outstanding performance in the use of firearms. That's a good thing. Um, in the use of the 40 caliber, this individual out of possible scored 96, 92, and a 90. In the use of the 380, a score of 92, 98, and 96. Um, probably an avid hunter or, or, um, or probably a hunter. A shotgun, a, a 100, 100, and another 100 for an overall average of 96. I'm very happy and proud to present this award to Chad Woodburn. We will now present the Academy class members with their badges, certificates of attainment, their oaths of office, and their value coins. And at this time, we'll have them line up. You can take photographs. We just please ask you not to block the procession. Daniel J. Becker. His badge will be presented by his brother-in-law, Master Trooper Richard Bone Steele of District 13. Stephen S. Buckley. David E. Caswell. Jason E. Ginder. Katrina M. Greenwell. Jeffrey R. Gruber. Joshua T. Haber. Brian L. Hamilton. His badge will be presented by his cousin, Trooper Matthew Lawrence, District 52. Jeremy L. Kelly. His badge will be presented by his father, Sergeant John Kelly, Laboratory Division.
Joshua A. Orm. Charles L. Pirtle. Joseph A. Rutledge. Aaron W. Shaw. Andrew R. Shank. His badge will be presented by his uncle, Master Trooper Tony Fortwood, District 53. James M. Stanley. Matthew B. Toish. His badge will be presented by his brother, Trooper Nathan Toish of District 45. Jason R. Ward. Wade L. Watkins. Ryan T. White. <laughs> Eric C. <Sports>. Williams. <laughs> Chad T. Woodburn. <laughs> Thomas J. Zeiser. It's seeing a need and filling it without being told to do so. Service is a privilege and an earned right of, the, of an Indiana State Trooper. Professionalism. Professionalism is the last of the three immutable values. This is the glue of what makes a trooper a trooper. It's the attention to the details. Professionalism is keeping your shoes shined and your brass polished. It's wearing the state seal with pride and humility. Professionalism, professionalism is the ability to be a trooper to society, but yet a father or mother to your children. After all, our children needs, need parents, not police officers, to raise them. Professionalism is staying in good shape, not for yourself, but for your fellow workers. 
It's a teachable spirit, always willing and striving to learn and grow as an officer and a person. It's having the discipline to manifest the state police core values of honor, courage, belief, faith, benevolence, commitment, and community on a daily basis. Professionalism is the ability to show respect to people from all walks of life. It's having the ability to, to, to talk to children and to control a domestic dispute during the same shift. Professionalism is the tradition of excellence in the Indiana State Police. In the wake of September 11th, we have all gained a greater appreciation for our freedom and our country. Let us not forget the price of that freedom and the many who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be here today. Let us make them proud. It is now our time to become protectors of that freedom. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with these thoughts. He could demand the attention of a crowded room with his mere presence, or he can slip into that room without even being noticed. He can make your heart race 200 beats a minute upon seeing his flashing lights in your rear view mirror, or can restore your heart rate to normal when he comes to your rescue. He can change a tire, give directions, or solve the crime. He can save a life or take one if his duty requires so. He patrols while you sleep, work, and play. He protects your family, freedom, and life. He's a gentleman, a scholar, and a fighter. He's an officer of the law, a keeper of the peace, and trooper is his name. Thank you. Very nice, Joshua. We've heard uh, many uh, presentations before from class, but I must tell you that really, uh, it's really tops. It's very nice, very nice. We've added something uh, additional to um, recruit school graduation. Prior to the class actually uh, getting together, I asked the uh, executive staff and um, Major Mettler, the commander of training, that we ought to take an opportunity to recognize those ISP heroes who have given the ultimate sacrifice. And in doing so, to have each academy class to select those heroes to, uh, to honor for their duration of uh, those 22 weeks. This class uh, selected three individuals. The three individuals beginning with Trooper Eugene Teague. These individuals have given the ultimate sacrifice, and as the governor expressed earlier, their names are on monument that's on the west side of, uh, of this building in honor, and their names are also on plaques that are in each of our state police posts as well as the headquarters here in Indianapolis. Eugene Teague was the first to give the ultimate sacrifice. He was born in 1909 and died in 1933. He was a member of the Indiana State Police appointed in 1933 as a very young young man. He died as uh, as each of these individuals do in a in a violent way. Um, this particularly with uh, the Dillinger uh, gang. The class recognized each of these individuals by prepare, preparing a document for their family members. Fortunately they're uh, there are no living survivors uh, for the Teague family, but each of them are presented with a um, memorial booklet such as this. They did all the research and documentation and uh, will remain at the Law Enforcement uh, Academy. Um, next individual, I'm sorry, is Paul Minimum. Minimum. And we're very happy to have his daughter, Paulette Schrader, with us here today. Paulette, will you, will you please come up? Let me read just a little bit about Paul Miniman. 
He was appointed in September the 1st, 1935 at the Lafayette District. He died May 27, 1937, following the robbery of the Goodland State Bank in Goodland, Indiana. Police from all corners of Indiana were taking part in a manhunt for what was called the Brady Gang, a very ruthless uh, gang of individuals who went all across the country, as a matter of fact, and uh, found uh, robbery in, in, in Indiana, Illinois, and, and Kentucky to be, in their minds, a bit profitable. Trooper Minimum and Deputy Sheriff Elmer Craig had stopped to investigate the occupants of a car parked along the road when another car approached and began shooting at them. Trooper Minimum and Deputy Craig pursued the vehicle but lost sight of it. When the officers reached an intersection, Trooper Minimum opened his door, attempting to look for tire marks, and was shot by automatic fire by one of the suspects. He died of his wounds two, two days later. Deputy Sheriff Elmer Craig was also wounded uh, in this gunfight, but he did uh, survive. We're very happy that uh, his daughter is here with us today to know that we, we honor him. This class found it in particular for them to honor him with presenting to you this memory document uh, of him. You're much, much welcome. Would you like to say something? Please. Governor O'Bannon, Chief Justice Shepard, Superintendent Carraway, and Major Midler, I want to thank you very much for inviting me to today's ceremony. I'm very honored to be here, and I thank you for the time and effort put into this portfolio in honor of my father, Paul Miniman. I will treasure it and share it with my family and friends, and eventually place it in the Indiana State Police Museum. I congratulate all of you on your achievements, and I wish you success in your careers as Indiana State Police officers. I also want to ask God to bless you all and keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Finally, the class found it to honor Trooper William Dixon. He's from South Bend, Indiana, and appointed in 1935. He died in June 1938. Trooper Dixon stopped to assist two young men who were uh, disabled in their vehicle. As he approached the vehicle and asked who owned the car, one of the men, who were a member of what was then called the Easton Gang, shot Dixon in the hand. Reaching for his gun to return fire, more gunfire erupted and Trooper Dixon was shot. Two days later, Trooper Dixon died, but not before one of the assailants had been killed and the other captured. I'm very grateful that the 62nd class founded to honor Dixon, Teague, and Miniman. These documents will be preserved for, for those to review and to see at the State Police Museum. This is our way to honor the true heroes of the Indiana State Police. No one could ever expected the, the tragedy of September 11th to, to follow. We're very grateful that the class found it in their hearts to honor these individuals, true, Hoosier, true Hoosiers and heroes of the Indiana State Police. Thank you very much. And I'll ask Captain Tom Melville of the Indiana State Police to come forward and in recognition of the class and also of fallen heroes of the Indiana State Police to sing Back Home Again in Indiana. Captain Melville. I have always been a wanderer over land and sea. Yet the moonbeam on the water cast a spell o'er me. A vision fair I see, again I seem to be 
Back home again in Indiana, and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still shining bright through the sycamores for me. The new moon hay sends all its fragrance from the fields I used to roam. When I dream about the moonlight on the Wabash, then I long for my Indiana home. Fancy paints on memory's canvas, scenes that we hold dear. We recall them in days after, clearly they appear. And oftentimes I see a scene that's dear to me. Back home again in Indiana, and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still shining bright through the sycamores for me. The new moon hay sends all its fragrance from the fields I used to roam. When I dream about the moonlight on the Wabash, then I long for my Indiana home. Well, moms and dads, loved ones, your special ones have made it. They have arrived. They have become one of Indiana's finest, an Indiana State Police officer. We welcome them and you into the Indiana State Police family, and we pray that you will always be very proud of your loved one and the work that they do for this department and for the people of the state of Indiana. We please stand for our closing benediction and remain standing for withdrawal of the colors. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to leave this sacred place, may you never depart from our lives. May you always watch over and protect these young troopers during their tours of duty so that they may return safely to their loved ones. May you forever be with those sworn and civilian personnel, the Indiana State Police, so that they may feel your presence as they go about their daily duties. May your presence always be felt and known to the family members of the department so that they may be assured and comforted and knowing that their loved one is in your care. Father, may your peace and your grace be upon us now as we leave this ceremony, and may your Holy Spirit fill each of us with your love and guide us through our lives. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
23 new state troopers on the road tonight. The latest graduates of the Law Enforcement Academy were sworn in and received their new badges today. 
Wednesday, Police Superintendent Mel Carraway told them to seize the day by making a difference for Hoosiers, even if it's just one person at a time. Governor Frank O'Bannon told them Hoosiers have come to see law enforcement officers in a different light since September 11th. In these troubling times, it is great to know that all 23 of you are dedicated to serving your fellow Hoosiers, not for fame, not for glory, but for our citizens' safety. The new officers spent 22 weeks training at the academy. You'll soon see, soon see some fresh faces on the Indiana State Police Force. Graduation day ceremonies took place at the State House Rotunda for members of Class 62. They're 23 strong and just completed training at the Indiana State Police Academy.